What is up guys? Patrick back with another video. Today I am reviewing best choice roofing um, from the standpoint of an employee's perspective. So uh, I did work for this company for a little under a month and a half, I think it was. And um, I just want to confirm everybody's sort of curiosities out there. You've probably seen their job listings on Indeed. Um, they will literally take anyone. I'm just kidding. Um, but they are, <laughs> they are very lax on the hiring and I will, I will show you why they're like that. And it's based on this, um, sort of higher level business management, uh, principle for sales companies to hire fast and fire faster. And when they fire faster, guess whose money they're absorbing and confiscating while you're on your way out. So I really think that uh, this information should guide anyone's decision as to whether or not they want to work for Best Choice Roofing. So uh, Best Choice Roofing is sort of a, a larger company, I guess you could say. It franchises out locations in over half the United States and it's based in Tennessee. And so what they normally do is hire people to work commission only as roof inspectors and salespeople. And what this involves is you go out to a neighborhood, you look for roofs with some damage uh, or some shingles off, hopefully a lot of shingles off. And I'll get, get to um, why that is for just looking out for the customer. Um, but you knock on their door, you ask to inspect their roof. Uh, sometimes, most of the time they say no get off my front porch or some variation thereof. Um, sometimes they let you up there. Or if you're like me and you don't even have a ladder when you start out, that's not that's not going to prevent Best Choice Roofing from using you to set up appointments now and then not paying you on the back end. But anyway, so um, yeah, you go up, you knock a door, you inspect a roof, you sign them up to a first piece of paper called a contingency. And this is like how a lot of lawyers work. You know, they work on a contingency basis. And all this says is, uh, if I can get the insurance company to give you a chunk of change, you're going to give us the business and we'll replace your roof. And, uh, you know, Best Choice Roofing's goal is to replace the entire roof. They don't do repairs. I'll get into why that's problematic and uh, and something that they try to sweep under the rug during your, during your training uh, in, a, in a moment as well. But so they'll take just about anyone and you can go knock doors for them and you can sign up business and you can get that all important first uh, signature and it's not easy to do um, just to say right I mean going door to door doing sell stuff getting up on a roof um, and even if you don't have a ladder you can set that up for later share that deal with somebody but um, I'm not gonna say it's the hardest not also not the easiest job and uh, it helps to have customer service background it helps if you're kind of like me you've been running a YouTube channel for over a decade and, um, but you know, this is all the stuff that best choice roofing will take advantage of, but then, um, absolutely goes to you, ditch you and not pay you for. So they will utilize all of these, uh, we'll just call them soft skills, just being sort of, uh, you know, an above average intelligence human, um, which is also why, uh, no surprise, they love to set up shop in college towns because it's again, there is hardly any risk on best choice roofing for getting them to push you out the door to knock on doors and to sign people up. The problem is the managers are incredibly inexperienced. They are super clicky. Um, they're not morally or ethically sound. Like imagine working for a bunch of people that you suspect are going to steal from you the second that you leave anything around them that isn't nailed down and not just, you know, three tab shingles. I'm talking about, you know, your contingency credits and all of that stuff. And, um, I just remember asking because I could tell like after my first two weeks there, like it probably wasn't going to be for me. And I asked like, well, how can I actually leave? Like, do you need two weeks notice? And how do you not lose credit for the deals you signed up? And oh, that sent them flying. And they were like, well, if that's how you feel, then you can just leave right now. And I was like, uh, and by then I'd already signed up several deals that went to contract and, uh, they were, they were larger than average deals. So, um, yeah, they're definitely not free speech. They're definitely not about answering straight up questions. Like even if you're not trying to screw them and you're trying not to get screwed because that's one of those things you're going to read about in the, uh, indeed employee reviews. A lot of people are, you're going to hear a lot of people complaining like these folks still owe my mo owe me money. And, um, it doesn't quite make sense until you actually work for them. And so, uh, between that first piece of paper, you get the customer to sign and then waiting for the actual roof install to happen 
and the contract to be signed, they use that as an excuse to say basically, um, you know, if you make them mad or uh, if you don't do everything they say, because they are some slave drivers, they're not good managers, they're not good leaders, again, they're not good people, they will find an excuse to fire you. Hey, what do you know? Hire fast, fire faster. And so um, it's written in so that, you know, if you get fired after that contingency, but not before the contract is signed, uh, sign, the managers confiscate all the proceeds. All right, so you can see how the fraud is baked in and it's actually profit incentivized for them to fire people and then just take their money, especially if they don't like them. And um, you might say, well, why would you kill the golden goose, right? Why would you kill, why would you throw somebody out if they're signing business stuff? Well, because the managers are a little weird and uh, the managers oftentimes rent each other real estate property. So they have these like side things going on outside of work. Uh, and then they all hang out. They're all kind of, well, not kind of, some of them are very overweight, like morbidly obese. They're always eating, always snacking. Like I remember getting uh, formally counseled in writing and uh, their obese uh, female assistant manager who, I don't know what she exactly was good for. Maybe she could sign up some business herself occasionally, but she was super flaky. And she's sitting there like stuffing her face with powdered donuts. Uh, when I'm being written up and given two strikes because I wanted to reschedule a photo shoot or something for a customer. And this was a customer I had a split with, with the assistant manager. And so to answer a question about, because I know a lot of people call it a pyramid scheme, what they do is they send roof inspectors out in the field, especially in the beginning, with a manager to sign up business, split the deal, take the selfies, drop it in the group, group chat to keep everybody motivated and working for free. Okay. And then they don't even want to pay you on the back end, but, but then, you know, and there's all these little things you can get in trouble for not doing, you know, like if it's your day off and you don't post all zeros in the group chat at like 7 45 PM, uh, or if they spin the wheel of punishment at the training meeting or the, the sales meeting, or if you don't smile enough at the sales meeting. So they're very petty, um, they're really focused on a lot of things that don't actually matter. Again, like even if you're signing up business and customers like you because you're a real person and you see the value and just, you know, the whole process and whatever, you know, they don't care. They're not grateful for that. And they're more into like having you uh, basically be a hundred percent obedient to them, um, than just making money for everybody. But they also worship money. Because at these sales meetings, which are every Monday and Friday from 8 to 11 a.m., which, by the way, you're hardly ever awake uh, the rest of the time, the rest of the week. You work in the afternoons for the most part and Saturdays. Um, they have all these crazy sales meetings where, like, if you don't worship money and you're not, like, totally in, like, and they're always, like, dangling six figures and 150 k over your head. And, and it's like, bro, I'm a homeless, disabled veteran and you hired me with no ladder. I told you I was broke. And now you can't even pay me for the business I've signed up. Like. You know, or you try to say, well, I need to reschedule this because I just inspected 10 roofs and uh, whatever, you know, so so they want equal pay from your deals, but not equal responsibility. And then they hold it over your head because you're not kissing butt, you know, and um, that is how they are. But let me talk about how uh, they actually screw over customers, too. So, you know, that that initial piece of paper, they get people to sign the contingency with the customer. Um, yeah, only one out of three of those actually goes to contract, which leaves the customer dangling basically with their insurance company since best choice roofing doesn't do repairs. So now, now this person who you knocked on their door and you were like, Hey, you just got some damage. Let's sign you up, get your insurance, blah, blah, blah. Insurance com company comes back and says, no, we're only going to give you partial approval or no approval. We're going to deny it. And guess what? They're still expected to fix their roof and now they got to do it out of pocket. Or they could lose their insurance and their home. And, you know, and this is one of those things they gloss over in the training. So uh, they're super greedy. They don't mind cutting corners. They don't mind scamming people left and right. Um, and I remember getting put on medical leave involuntarily because I called HR uh, just to submit documentation from the VA that said I was 50% service uh, connected disabled. And I had just inspected 10 roofs. And uh, like, and that afternoon I was going out to an assisted living facility or slash retirement home, which is a huge big deal, like by square footage on the roof um, to get them to sign some paperwork. And, and, and I had the guy in the palm of my hand because I respect the guy as kind of the guy. Um, and he was super nice and he was going to sign. And I, and I had to go out there and tell the guy, like I had to drive an hour and be like best choice roofing. Just put me on involuntary medical leave. And when I asked HR, 
uh, some broad named Jennifer in Tennessee, when I asked her, like, am I even going to get paid for, I was like, I was like, slow down. Can we just back out of this conversation and me not get put on involuntary medical leave? Cause I don't want to lose credit for the work I've done. I don't want to not get paid because of your 61 page employee contract with all this stuff written into it. And they couldn't give me a straight answer. And then they were like, hang on. And they waited two minutes and they go, well, just go ahead and go out there and lock down that appointment and, uh, and then, and then go on and, and then go on medical leave at the end of the day. And I'm like, will I even get paid for that? And they go, go read your employee contract. So that, sh that shows you how just like oblivious they are. I'm going to sign up. Uh, I don't know how much it was. It was, it was something like, you know, probably 150 to 200 squares job, which is really big. And, uh, it was a sure deal and they put me on involuntary medical leave and can't even tell me if they're going to pay me or not. So they will abuse people. They will absolutely use you because you have some time and you're willing to knock. Even if you sign it up, um, it doesn't matter because that atmosphere is there. Um, they're looking to take as much as they can and they're super greedy again. And they all wear these little like manager vests, uh, to cover up how like overweight they are and they work six days a week and worship money. And if you don't, you're going to stand out, but not in a good way. And they'll find a way to get rid of you and take your money. And, uh, that's what happened to me. And so I had a lawyer actually contact me a week ago. Uh, and so I now have an attorney and, um, I am pursuing, uh, all available avenues against best choice roofing. I'm going to put a link below. I want to hear your story or if you need some help with this as well. Um, I'll, I'll put a link to a contact form and, uh, and if I think that I can help you out some kind of way, again, I'm not an attorney, but maybe I can refer you somewhere or just to, just to hear your story or just, you know, drop it in the comments as well. And, uh, we can see how these folks do business. And again, I have nothing against roofing or direct sales, but they really don't care. And they will steal from you and not give one single flying F if you know what I'm saying. All right. <laughs> so, and they don't care about the customers either. And, uh, yeah. And, rent, and when, when managers are renting each other, real estate deals, you know, hooking each other up, do you think that's not going to have a conflict of interest? Of course it is. And they're violating commercial code properties of procurement, um, and also, uh, un, undue enrichment on their part by sending someone out there to procure the business and then ditching them for a technicality. So best choice roofing, shame on you. And, uh, your managers are scumbags and they're not leaders and it's no surprise. They're not veterans, you know? They take advantage of veterans who will go there and work and, uh, and they're not putting any skin in the game. And all they do is worship money, money, money. And you know what? Uh, one, one of the worst, I guess, bellwethers you could say about working at best choice roofing was I had been there two weeks and uh, already one of their employees, my age, by the way, had a stroke gone. Um, and he was actually a money making like uh, dude as well. And he'd been there a while. Uh, and then I heard they went to their corporate meeting in Tennessee and some franchise owner got fired because they wouldn't spin the wheel of punishment. So let that be a lesson to you. You're working at a place that is an absolute circus of greed and hypocrisy. So that's my best choice roof and uh, review. This is Patrick. Leave your comments below. Have a great day.